We're now going to have a very interesting conversation. So I'm looking forward to introduce you uh, to both Chiara Corazza, Managing Director of Women's Forum for the Economy and Society, and Her Excellency Noura Al-Kabi, Minister of Culture and Knowledge Development from the Unit United Arab Emirates. Um, they will showcase the power of women leadership to drive a more resilient future post-COVID, especially through the lens of the cultural sector. So, Her Excellency, Chiara, the floor is yours. Good afternoon, all of you, good friends of the Women's Forum. I'm so delighted, Dianora, Her Excellency Minister Kabi, to see you again after, at least virtually, after that we spent so much time preparing our should be outstanding first Women's Forum Middle East in Sorbonne and in Louvre Abu Dhabi on the 7th, 8th of March. But I promise we will come back for sure. As soon as we can, we will come back. And during all this preparation, I had the honor and the chance to meet incredible women, including yourself, Nora, that uh, show me how much uh, under the drive of the vision of the mother of the nation, the, uh, the United Arab, um, um, the, the Emirates, are really having a vision for women empowerment, especially in economic. And I have to confess, confess I've been very impressed because I knew that a lot had been done, but I was not aware that in such important fields as finance, for instance, with IDGM, or in oil and gas with ADNOC, or even in Mubadala, there's a gender lens in each important sector, private and public including in the government, Nura, where you have so many outstanding colleagues and young women completely committed to bring really the voice of women for the, to force the economy and the society in the Emirates. Then I really wanted, because we're talking about the future in this COVID crisis, I really wanted, Nura, that you can come and share with us what some of us privileged knows, but not enough, and to share with you what you've done, knowing that you have a comparative advantage on most of the G7 countries, because, because you know, in the Emirates, 65% of engineers are women. 65% is the highest rate in the world. And we are talking about the future of work. We are talking about um, how to build this new society. Then we need the skills. We need the uh, competences. We know the expertise in those fields in which we can able to transform the world. That, that for uh, Noah, please share with us Thank you again for being with us, really. I'm very touched that you, we, that you can be with us. Please share what you're doing, what you already did, and how you are reshaping a resilient way this special period to construct the after post COVID world. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Chiara. Chiara. Uh, it's wonderful to, uh, uh, to see you through such a digital platform. Uh, this just uh, shows uh, how uh, how determined you are and the Women's Forum to continue such fruitful conversations that uh, uh, enforces the solidarity of what we do. Uh, sharing knowledge is key. Uh, we are all now living in a in kind of a one world. Uh, borders are kind of uh, diminished uh, uh, due to, to how we're connected we are. Um, I would like just to uh, touch base very uh, swiftly in terms of uh, the kind words you mentioned uh, about women's, uh, the woman world in, in the United Arab Emirates. And if you can, you know, see the, you know, the, the, the picture behind me is the founder of the nation, uh, the late Sheikh Zayed. Uh, Sheikha Fatma, uh, who uh, God bless her, she's she's with us. She's been uh, the executor of his vision in terms of empowering women, getting them into education. Uh, the UAE has been diversifying the economy. So how education is also playing a role in terms of having certain universities that are equipped for females uh, to to uh, to study uh, and and again at the same time to work. Uh, in partnership with their uh, with their colleagues uh, who are uh, men, um, the UAE government uh, 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 care did activate uh, the remote employment. Um, what we saw uh, since the beginning of such pandemic is just a simple button that was switched from us being uh, in our offices to home. Currently, I'm, 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 I'm talking to you from home. I've been working from home for the past more than two months. Um, while there is kind of an advantage, the virtual uh, meetings are more efficient, uh, uh, are very quick. 
yet again at the same time when you're at home the boundaries of your personal space and your professional space kind of uh, uh, attacked in a way or another so how can you create that balance uh, also, we were talking before our session that what, you know we are also uh, experiencing a new norm normality. The new normality is different. We should engage with this kind of a new uh, uh, normal of how we're tackling the the, the pandemic. So remote employment uh, was very swift within the government. Uh, uh, of course, uh, yesterday there was an announcement that on Sunday there will be thirty percent of employees uh, resume work in office in the federal uh, uh, in federal offices um, i just need to also highlight that there are certain categories that are still exempted from working from the office such as pregnant women uh, mother uh, mothers of children who are under the ninth uh, grade uh, who who are, who are duties are not require their presence in the office uh, people with determination, uh, with certain also symptoms of uh, immune system dis dysfunctions. So there are those precautions that we're taking to uh, to manage the continuity of work, yet also taking care of of, of women and individuals who are maybe uh, above the age or the age of sixty or above or above the age of sixty. Uh, so in the UAE, we we looked into and we talked about. Where does the ba where can we strike the balance? And the simple answer is there is no balance that we can strike currently, uh, because we need also to put ahead. I mean, to place ahead of us uh, our health, our safety, the safety of our loved ones, yet the adaptability and continuity of what we do. So, and the an economic uh, uh, side of culture uh, and creativity, uh, we have an arts and creative industries council. This council uh, oversees the cultural and arts uh, sector in the UAE. It's more of an advisory council, but we met, we had a virtual meeting uh, a month ago to uh, study the ways to introduce a, a stimulus package uh, to support artists uh, and how is our duty to support and the artists and the freelancers and the small businesses that keep them uh, afloat. Of course, that work uh, uh, required a comprehensive national survey because you want to diagnose what are the challenges. Such surveys will trickle down certain solutions. One is how can we offer uh, a fund a relief to those freelancers, which we are currently doing. The second uh, dimension is the policies that will enable uh, creatives in the cultural scene to be working with such circumstances uh, within uh, within the, within the pandemic, and Kira, um, I've been uh, with with during such time, I've been meeting uh, colleagues from different uh, countries, minister of, ministers of culture. So today I've met the minister of culture of Germany, where you know she shared with me the knowledge of how are they taking of their creative sector. The minister of culture of Croatia, the minister of culture of Thailand, of Indonesia. And it's so beautiful to look at how we're very much connected and similar, yet exchanging the solutions and then uh, raising above kind of a, a local level to a regional and international and working with institutions such as the United States to look at how can we protect um, our artists with such digital work. Uh, if we want to uh, uh, guarantee the livelihood and the sustainability of business, I don't want the artist and culture to be taken for granted. We don't want it to be always streaming for free in music and in art. It's fun, it's beautiful, it connects us, yet we also uh, um, genuinely believe uh, it's, it's, it's our duty to keep them afloat and to consider the creative and cultural sector as a dynamic one as an, and an important one to uh, to the economic landscape within within a country from a heritage perspective cultural perspective and also economic perspective no do, did you did you had you the opportunity to have a gender lens for that to support the creative the creative system and the creative industries in the emirates or it was a general policy or do, did you take a special care for women who as you know are more suffering than are more impacted than others we just saw the statistic in a, in a 
previous panel, on the 4 million of people uh, that lose the job in the United States, 60% are women. And we know that women are maybe more um, impacted in many countries and in many fields. And then the creative industry would be the same. Did you have some special, uh, how can I say, strategy to support women? Uh, that's an excellent question, Kara. What we started with, with such national survey, uh, is of course getting uh, all sorts of responses from uh, men versus women. Uh, men, uh, from, from a response perspective, especially the ones who request a relief support, uh, men were more than women. Uh, uh, and, and this is from a percentage which I saw today. We don't have, of course, the numbers that we have represent just the segment of individuals uh, who require support. Uh, and therefore, this is uh, how it is so far. Yet, looking at the scene and the landscape um, uh, care of women, they make half of my team in the Ministry of Culture. Uh, and, and leaders across private and, and government uh, cultural institutions across the country uh, are also more than half in the UAE. So we have a gender imbalance when it comes to having more women uh, in the cultural scene than men. Uh, yet we're also con we're going to conduct a second kind of a survey to look at where are uh, the specific kind of uh, challenges that might be trickled, whether it's a, if, if it's if it's a gender related, if it's a business related, if it's a policy related. So far, um, there are no specific specifics when it comes to uh, uh, there are more women or how can we support more women or what can be tailored, I believe due to the to the strong base of how business is performed or education is in the UAE or the percentage of graduates and whatsoever. So I think the landscape is empowering as, as an enabler. It, it looks at uh, uh, the competence of work Looking at also from a gender balance uh, council, we have our policies that support women for sure, 100%. Um, and if I hope that you know we will offer kind of a equal opportunities to both genders, yet also uh, I hope that with such exercise, uh, it will highlight what can we fix uh, when it comes or uh, propose to leadership when it comes to better policies. No, I pick up the, uh, one question. I have many others on my side, but I pick up a question. You mentioned that uh, you feel as you were one word in this crisis, but also forced to be distant from one another. How can the women use cultural resources to feel more connected to one to others, less alone? I, I think what we're doing right now is, is uh, as Kiara, what you're doing with the team is making us more connected. Uh, you're, you know, we, we tend to, I mean, I remember our meeting in Abu Dhabi. Uh, we, I think we, we really connected from our first meeting. It felt that we shared, we shared the same values. We shared the same kind of objectives. And it's, it's kind of a global kind of a, a global connection uh, of women and women, whether you're in Paris or New York or Kenya. So it's, 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 it's that kind of a, 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 a a DNA built that takes us to look into uh, work in a similar way, uh, uh, making sure that there are always consensus, uh, the empathy plays a role. Uh, you know, we, we, we tend to look at certain values and, and have this checklist in the way we work. Uh, so I feel the connectivity is there pre-COVID, during COVID. Um, I think what would define women and what is defining women right now is the way uh, they are tackling the pandemic and how we're seeing that in, in certain uh, countries and certain languages uh, that are, uh, let's say, a certain style of communication when it comes from a woman to, uh, to, to, to their people or to, the, uh, to an entity. Um, I, I think the connection is there. The bigger question is, what can we do with such connection? How can we focus on more of concrete results? Um, so, you know, you just need to cross one or two actions post our meetings and, and follow up with it, uh, even if it's uh, a one action uh, uh, and look how it would uh, unfold in the future.
No, time goes too quickly. I will ask you a very important question for me, for me, for all the audience, because I really think it's important. Today, we are launching our recommendation of the Women's Forum community for the G7. I know that the aim is you're not in the G7, but, but you're extremely active. You are the guest of honor for the G20. And anyway, we are, you are extremely active and leading by example in many fields. If we, we had to do in this, based on your experience, based on what you're doing and based on what you think should be done, if you had really one or two recommendations of the future work in integrating, including women, women leadership and how we can contribute to the work of the future, what would be your main recommendation, knowing that I have to confess to the public and I told everybody in the world, including Minister Schapa and Bruno Le Maire and everywhere, that I learned something that is very dear to me that I put in the proposal of the G7, it's the paternity leave on two days before the women go to the clinic. And I can tell you that I looked all the best practice worldwide and it was the first time that I discovered that in fact the good, the genius idea is to ask fathers to, to st start the paternity leave before. Like that they can care, take care of the household, they share the responsibility and then they are ready to. And of course, like that women can go to the clinic with a free spirit taking care only of what is important and this is a genius idea that comes from the emirates and you have probably others genius idea like that that you can share with us and it's not a joke i mean this is a very important measure i mean it's not a joke because it's a mindset and if maybe if we can give us some advice some ideas to the call of to action on how to be sure that women will be there to design the shape of the article bit uh, time in in how the government should lead by example, would be really the responsive for the governments. Uh, th thank you, Kara. This is a really important question. And uh, and you said that, you know, we, when we first, uh, before entering uh, the session, you, you, you told me it's uh, we're in the process or we're in a mode of a mindset change. Uh, and uh, if, I, if I allow, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use Kara's quote of the mindset change. How do you change a mindset? You change your mindset in school, at homes, when raising children, uh, the content of your stories and media, how do you highlight that? Uh, and I feel it's, we, we, we have a responsibility to look at what will affect or what will help uh, our audience to understand uh, the importance of collaboration between men and women, how it's more of a, of an equal kind of opportunities to both, how both complement each other, how both can compete with one another as men and men or women versus women. Yet there is nothing called men are better or women are better. And, and, and I feel we should encourage inclusivity in everything we do. We should encourage it in the way, even when we, uh, we have our, you know, Women Day or Women Forum. I think we should encourage more inclusivity because you said that that example of paternity, it also gives them, okay, it's, it's sometimes, you, you know, when you're, you're having a demo, demotivated employee and, you know, he or she will say, well, I didn't get instructions from my boss. Well, I don't know what to do. I think it's, it's just sometimes you just need to ask or a simple ask that will change the mindset. Um, sometimes, you know, there are certain practices of leadership uh, or looking at your parliament. I mean, the UAE parliament has now 50% uh, our representation of women. Yes, it is a decree by the president and individuals can argue they're with or against. Yet, you're going to see the children of the future who visit the parliament looking at women and men filling exact equal seats. And, uh, and, and that will also resonate in their in their in the back of their head and they will just grow um, and feel it's normal and feel it's a duty to empower that and it's feel it's feel a duty to focus on the progression despite uh, my my gender or despite uh, my background or uh, so I feel it's the mindset how can we from a from a social uh, from a science social studies in any place. How can I work on a, on an impact of research? Can, how can I get my students to look at those research? Uh, do a practice, it's a 10 years research or whatsoever. The most important thing is how can I work on an impactful uh, uh, movement 
that stems from a belief, that stems from a mindset, that stems from the household, from a school, from an education. Because when you look at a nation, you might judge it by the, the textbook and their schools. What, what, does it, what is it encouraging the kids? Uh, we always, you know, uh, have our, you know, have those, we have our big hopes to, you know, to our teachers and you know, they're responsible for a kid to be great in math or in science. And I think it's time to look at teachers, how they will make students be great in moral studies uh, uh, and, and, and being the good citizens. I think, especially right now with the COVID uh, uh, pandemic, you know, it's it's you're looking at celebrities and normal people on the same screen. So you're looking at how the blend is happening between the people who used to be celebrities and the people who are just, you know, usual individuals. We look the same. We're trying to work towards the same objective and goal. Yet that kind of also inclusivity, I think, will help change the mindset. And and just I would just ask to to say something, Sophie, if you allow me, I'm disruptive. I just want to say, you see, uh, and her and Alexi, it's the same. Ce celebrities are you. You're a role model in your country. You're so popular, and not only among the women. I can I can tell. And we have the chance, all this audience around the world, to to meet you virtually. And I hope really that we will give you the opportunity to be in one on our forums personally, like, like that you can personally share with all our audiences. Thank you so much because it was great as usual and really looking forward to see you very soon, Nora. Thank you. I'm, I'm truly honored. Thank you so much, Kira. Thank you, my dear friend.